welcome the highlights of the first day of this Cornhill Test match at Headingley. West Indies v England, with West Indies two up in the series after that memorable last day at Lords, where they absolutely slaughtered the England attack. West Indies went in with Michael Holding. His stress fracture has uh, healed, and he's there in a bowling attack of Ghana, Holding, Marshall, Baptiste, and Roger Harper, the off spinner, on a pitch where it didn't seem to me there was a great deal of grass. It looked to me as though there might be a bit of spin out there. And uh, I'm looking forward, in fact, to seeing Roger Harper and Nick Cook bowl. David Gow won the toss, and a very, very good toss to win it was. He had no hesitation in batting. Here's Joel Garner now with the last ball of the first over. Graham Fowler is taking strike. No runs on the board. The first runs, and look at that outfield now. No need to chase out. It's fairly raced away for four square on the offside. A nice pot here from Graham Fowler, well pitched up, just pushing at it. And then absolutely rocketed across the ground there. I think if you miss the fielder, hit the ball in the middle of the bat and you miss the fielder, it's going to be four runs on here today. sharply too. And very thick outside edge this. Going wide to the second of the gullies. Pitching well in front of him. And a nasty blow on his wrist for Mark and Marshall. It's Joel Garner of course who's getting the assistance of this uh, very strong breeze. Line up from the west. That's over pitched. Not uh, quite time. Full push again. And that's a good contest. And uh, oh, touch and go there whether that ball just hit the ropes or not. And I think uh, Eldine Baptiste has been very honest about it. And as a result, gets a round of applause from the crowd. Uh, Eldine Baptiste making a great effort to catch that ball, but just rolled against the rope. Took a nasty knock on and that's out, yes. So Fowler goes LBW to Ghana for 10 with just uh, 13 on the board. And, uh, stroke there almost uh, reminiscent of Mike Gatton, of course. Paul Terry and the Yorkshire crowd giving him uh, an excellent hand. Yes, Graham Fowler had looked in quite good nick here, but uh, sad piece of misjudgment this time. That ball pitching about middle and holding up and right in front of the middle stick. Clipped away there. Stuck in the back of the boxes and to Jim Laker a little earlier, and he was talking about the speed of uh, the ball across the outfield. No better example than that. It fairly raced across the surface. It's a searching examination for young Terry. I watched him make 176 down stall a couple of weeks ago, playing for Hampshire against uh, David Graveney's team. He made them very well. He's very much a front foot player. And he's off the mark. We regard that as being a stroke of luck for Paul Terry. Never mind. Maybe over a few of the nerves now. Nerves that uh, torment all players in their first test match. Bowling change, Marshall goes, holding comes on. The great fast bowlers the world has seen. Coming in at first change. Sure, he didn't quite time it, but the outfield might make up for that. And he's 
Very, very fast out there. Didn't come quite off the center of the bat, but good enough. Push and well run too. Terry was quick enough to see the ball was uh, getting away from Desmond Haynes. Came back smartly for a second. 39 for one. Good catch. Super catch, Harper. He's got a marvellous pair of hands and he's so quick. Terry goes. Court Harper, bold holding for eight. It's 43 for two now. In fact, that ball didn't do anything. It was more a straight ball, but it didn't quite get far enough across. He got a, a thick edge onto it, and it just went to a third slip. But it certainly didn't move at all in that delivery. David Gower now changing the field. The left-hander. Man's gone from behind square. He's gone back ooh, some 10, 15 yards behind the umpire. There are still four slips in the gully. Goes off the mark of single. Larry Gomes is down at deep finally. Looks like uh, racing away with no chance at all of stopping that. So the 50 comes up for England. The uh, right on the end of the 20. Got an out of Gower. Well, that was a bad shot. It's off a no ball. He's already committed to the shot before he heard the call. Again, it was that bit of extra bounce, and uh, certainly I don't think the no ball would have made any difference, and uh, it would certainly have done him if it had not been a no ball. But uh, that's the problem you've got to watch for Joe Gallagher, just that little bit extra he puts in and that bit of extra bounce. And he's given him out. Yes, not offering a shot, LBW. He's gone. It's another failure for the England captain, leaving England on 53 for three. In fact, I think it was probably a little bit unlucky there, but it did seem to bounce a little bit, did that, and uh, possibly it could have gone over the top. Not quite carrying to Harper. He's taking a knock too, I think. Controlling the bat, the bottom of the bat coming through, that's the reason he missed it, instead of controlling it with the left hand. Carver in to complete his over. And he gives away four runs. Short one, and uh, Alan Lamb got well on top of it this time, cracked it away square for a very good four runs. Give Alan Lamb a little bit of confidence because Joe Garner has caused him a lot of problems this over, but that one short and he got well on top of that and cracked it away just behind square for four. Just two more runs added up to the luncheon interval, 68 for three, and what a tough session that was as far as England were concerned. I thought they did superbly not to lose any more wickets there. Fowler and Gower, LBW not playing strokes to Garner, and Terry a tough initiation for him, and Chris Broad did very well to be 26 not out up to lunch and Alan Lamb fresh from a century at Lord's seven not out. We pick up play now after 11 runs have been added to the lunchtime score. 
It's Baptiste coming in, and he's about to bowl to Alan Lang. No ball called. And that choked off um, a vehement appeal from the West Indians. Baptiste was just about to leap several feet in the air. But he was well over the line there. And an inside edge, I think. Baptiste is uh, marking out his run now with uh, a certain amount of anger, I think. Oh, a good shot. And I heard, rather suspect Lamb was waiting for that. He probably saw that Baptiste was dragging his feet through the turf and the ball and was cranky and reckoned it might just have been a bouncer. No question about that at all. He was livid at being called for bowling a no ball and really he's not quite quick enough to bowl those. A little bit of life this morning in the first hour. And he's gone straight away. Clive Lloyd catches him. That spun quite sharply. Harper claims his first wicket. Broad has gone for 32. It's 87 on the board now for the loss of four wickets. It's definitely turned. Chris Broad falling away from that as he's hitting it. Getting an outside edge and Clive Lloyd picking up a mess from the Magnificent hook shot, nicely inside it. Almost a triumph for Baptiste down there. Bertha collected that very, very nicely. It's almost disaster in the end. Oh, my goodness, a real bit of luck this for England. Baptiste really never got in any sort of a position to make that catch. Short and full runs. They come on to that very quickly indeed. Hit it down, hit it hard, and hit it very well. So the hundred comes up for England, 102 now for four, with both of them going on to nine. And another fine pull shot. And both of them bouncing just about chest high, just the right place to pull. Oh, well bold. It's the best ball of the uh, over. And this is a magnificent delivery. See that? Just like a leg break. So still a bit of movement out there for the bowlers. And, uh, seen once again that variable bounce in the pitch. Tossing the fact that Tarper is uh, managing to get some spin as well. It's not been easy for England. 102 for four now. This is Harper to bowl. There's a quicker ball and, uh, offline. That run for you. Well, that's something quite unique. I don't very much whether you see an all run four again during the course of this match. And all runs, that's one close, of course, that uh, Arthur can't afford to bowl. Anything short of a length outside the off to the three men on the offside. The two of them are close fielders. So Lamb goes on to 35 and the total to 100. <laughs> so it's 
Gana with both them facing. That's a fine shot. Both an effort there for Lee. Threw himself at that one. Yes, well, they certainly give this the full treatment. He wasn't quite there, and the ball went in there a little bit and just wide of mid off. And again, that's a bit four more. But that uh, really on the half volley. This was a better shot. He got, he got to it, hit it on the floor all the way, and that was a very fine shot. No runs for both of them. Nobody will bother to chase that once again. Races up the hill. It's found a little bit of green, lush grass out there. But it hasn't made any difference. Certainly Big Joe seems to be attacking uh, both of them, trying to pitch the ball up, but it's cost him 12 runs so far. And certainly I think on this particular wicket, uh, better looking for a little bit better length rather than quite so full. That's uh, the other way, short, hooked away. And once again, Larry Gomes, the fielder down there, never any chance of stopping it, although that was uh, very futile of that young lad to come out and do the fielding for him. And that puts a 50 partnership up. And in terms of uh, what's gone before, it's come up in very quick time. Beautiful straight. Gone way, way over the fence. similar sort of shot that he played at Edgebast and got out but of course today the slope and the wind and everything are really in his favour it's going to go that way all the time now comes the problem for Clive Lloyd if Harper is getting a bit of stick what will happen to him now in fact uh, umpire Evans is chipping him again about uh, running down close to the line of the stumps an interesting situation here could we finish up without any West Indian bowlers if Harper's warned uh, for running too close to the line of stumps and not allowed to bowl Marshall's got a broken hand Garner's damaged an ankle and holding as a stress fracture he might be running into a few problems Let's keep your eye on that second step of Roger Harper's gone for that and it's out Botham has gone hesitation there wicket keeper and slips uh, all went up I'm not too sure the slips could have seen it because it went down the leg side but uh, Jeffrey Dujon and the bowler had absolutely no doubt Botham was far more hesitant before going off Yes, it certainly deflected. It I went off the splice of the gloves somewhere up at the top there. But certainly the ball deflected quite away. That was a real tragedy for England to lose Ian Botham so close to the tee interval. A fine innings that, 45. He played and missed occasionally, but he was carrying the attack back to the West Indians, as indeed was Alan Lamb, who at the moment is playing one of his better innings, 60 not out. 180 for five, and no runs added after tee with play. Baptiste is the bowler and he's coming into ball with Paul Downton taking strike. 
and uh, runs there for Downton. A long chase for uh, Gus Logie. And an enormous amount of ground to cover, and it's all in vain. It's a pretty good shot there from Downton. Swayed onto the back foot and uh, didn't hit it with a great deal of force, but then you don't need to with this outfield lightning fast. Two uh, darkish looking clouds above the uh, Kirkson Lane end. And, uh, they're coming towards us against a fairly strong breeze at the moment. As uh, in Bell's 12th man, Norman Cowns missing out for the third time running. It's a Baptiste again. That's a good looking stroke. Off the back foot, four runs all the way. Beautifully timed shot there by Alan Lamb. partnership this 51 the sixth wicket so far good shot now this will be a good chase for Logie he can run fast and even that is going to get away from him to 98, down to 17, 2.34 for 5. Logie. And 100 for Alan Lamb from the misfield. Pressure on the fielder, and Alan Lamb goes to a century. And I think in years to come, he might look back on this as one of the best hundreds he's made in first class trick tonight at 10 30 on espn's classic been an outstanding performance from alan lamb really splendid performance from him and down to 17. those 236 runs have come from 76 overs Partnership began at 172. And Downton has done a terrific job to stay there with Alan Lamb. And uh, not now. Clive Lloyd has taken his second sharp catch of the day. And the one that uh, must have gone on a little bit with Harper's arm or Downton played inside it. But a good piece of bowling from the West Indian off spinner Roger Harper. His second wicket. 236 on the board now for England. And six wickets down. And one run added to take the score at the close of play up to 237 for six with 45 minutes lost because right and then the rain that came down. A splendid innings from Alan Lamb, 100 not out. And I thought both of them played very well today for 45. So too Chris Broad, who went through the onslaught early on from the West Indian pace bowlers who did very well today. Joel Garner, who had two for 64 from 23 overs and seven maidens, was superb in his first spell. He bowled long spells all day and uh, bowled with great pace and got a lot of lift out of this pitch. Marsha was injured and a tragic injury that uh, double fracture of uh, the left thumb holding a little short of a gallop after being out of the game from mid-June, one for 54. Baptiste one wicket and nice to see Roger Harper in there bowling 16 overs and taking two wickets. 